Good evening and welcome back to Mystic Matters. We are the Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce. Good evening, Kristen, once Good evening. again. Thank you. I am seeing quite a bit of you, you know, and I kind of like it. I can't get yeah. enough of you, Suzette. <laughs> I can't. Oh, sure. She says that all the time. Well, we've got an exciting show this evening. But before we get started, Kristen, you know, we're gearing up. Uh, the summer's winding down for the chamber. Say it isn't so. <laughs> uh. And you can tell when somebody said to me, uh, someone in the studio said, I was behind a school bus mm -hmm. uh, this afternoon. So it's, it's great to see the kids uh, back in school and also, also be safe there while you're waiting for the bus and make sure you, you watch for the kids as, you're, as they're crossing over to the bus. But anyway, so the chamber doesn't stop. No. I think there's a little time right after the holidays and then we gear up for our, our events that come right right back up, starting art festivals, starting all the, the other events. But what do we have going on in the next couple of weeks? Well, um, just this past weekend, Labor Day weekend, Fields yes. of Fire opened their adventure park. Fantastic. Which is like the zip line and right. build confidence teamwork. Hang from and he trees. was on. He was on the show. He was. Uh, I want to say last year, but mm -hmm. the permitting was still going on, yep. and so now his dreams come true. His dream has come true. Yeah. Yeah. So there's going to be. A, uh, there was a grand opening on Sunday, and it was fantastic. You didn't do the zip line. I'm not going to say that there's video anywhere <laughs> of me doing the zip line. Um, also, tomorrow, September 8th, yes. is going to be the Fairview Odd Fellows. They end their fourteen thousand dollar drawing. Yeah. Well. well Oh, we've discussed this, Kristen. We've discussed this. You know I have. I have the winning ticket. I want to tell Trisha Cunningham that, but I think you should call her and remind her. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just I'm yeah. sorry to disappoint you. Well, always. It is I what will it is. always be sorry. Yeah. So uh, please attend that. That's yeah, the business after be hours. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on there. And then, of course, uh, Mystic Eats Riverside Food Festival is this weekend, yeah. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Don't Fantastic. eat all day Thursday. Right. Okay. To get ready. To get ready. Yeah. It's a great, great event. Yeah. So once again, Kristen, we have a lot going on uh, in our town and um, we're very privileged to, to work and, and live here in Mystic. It was a wonderful summer for all of us, for all of us businesses. And the tourists really came out this year. The restaurants were happy. Yeah. People were happy. Residents. We had a great art festival. Yeah. And so now we gear up uh, for the fall season and then into our holiday season. Well, Kristen, we talk about a lot uh, about the chamber and our staff and, of course, Trisha Walsh, you and Hannah Stewart, and, of course, Jonathan. But we always seem to really drive in there some of our uh, favorite volunteers, and we have many of them. And I think I want you to do the honor this evening, because since you work on a day-to-day -day basis, one of our favorite volunteers, to introduce our next guest. Great. Well, I will introduce Celia Gallup. Um, who works at the Mystic Chamber for us. Uh, she is a fantastic volunteer. She's volunteer extraordinaire. Extraordinaire. <laughs> she is uh, always there for us. And I started talking to Seal during my lunch breaks, and she confessed that she used to live in Saudi Arabia. Now, I, I was very, very interested in this because yeah. of the cultural relevance, uh, because of the difference in cultures, mm -hmm. and I wanted to hear the stories. And so we got to talking, and she showed me pictures, and I said, you got to be on the show. Right. Right. And another thing, Seal, what, when we get to know each other, of course, I've known Seal a very long time, her family, um, her sister, her brother-in-law. And it's nice when you get to that volunteer time in your life, and you can actually share these stories with, with people like myself and Kristen and, of course, the staff that you work with on every other day basis. So we want to talk about your trip to Saudi Arabia. But I want to know, what in the world made you pick Saudi Arabia? And what was this all about, Seal, at this time in your life? So why don't you give us sort of a history of why Saudi Arabia and how you went there and why you went there? Well, let me begin by saying that my husband was, at the time, he had retired military. And he was working an electric boat during that era. It was uh, time for, um, they had a great deal of trouble over at e Electric Boat, and therefore he decided he wanted to do something different. He's an engineer. So he put in a resume, and all of a sudden, this headhunter found him and said, would you like to go to Saudi Arabia and build a city, a military city? And my husband said, sure, why not? 
<laughs> and that's how it all began. Who does that? You want to build a city? I mean, about, as far as a city, I mean, I could do that with Legos. <laughs> like, like, honey, but over dinner. Not, um, right. By, right, the, by way, the way, we're going to Saudi Arabia. What? Right. Well, I, the Saudis needed a military yes. uh, city, and so that is how he got over there, and he worked for a Greek firm because they were the engineers in charge. And once we got over there, of course, everything changed. It was, it was something like um, when you go into a new country, and especially Saudi Arabia, and the culture is completely 100% different than what, that what we have. So we, ended, we had to get a visa uh, through D.C., and which we did. And then we, I was worried about the housing. I right. said, what kind of housing am I going to be living in? All I could think of was a tent. They're and like, go over there and build your own house. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, if you're going to be a, build a compound, build your own. Yeah. <laughs> but we want to just step back a little bit and just give us and educate the people about the time when we say the era. So what dates were these? Uh, that was between 1979 and 1981. Right. And it's two small young children. I mean, and really. Two, two children. Um, my daughter, Lisa, uh, stayed with my parents in Noank so she could finish St. Bernard's. Mm -hmm. And my son, John, who was seven at the time, of course, came with me. Right. And I thought it would be an excellent education for him. So I said, let's try it and let's do this. And so we got all the movers. Everything was taken care of for us. We got over, we flew over there. And the first thing that hit us was going through customs. Customs was a little bit different than they than it is over here. Mm -hmm. uh, they go through all your luggage. They go through everything. They if they see a magazine with a woman, a backside of a woman, they take that out. They do not like anything showing right. any anything of skin. any skin. Yeah, any face. skin. So that was the, that was our first introduction. And it was, it was an eye-opener for me, I have to admit. And then we got into housing, and the housing was, were uh, mobile homes that were brought over on the boat. So all American furnishings were inside. It was completely done, uh, all right down to the last plate. Huh. And all we had to do, really, was bring our clothes. So, we so the amenities were fine. The amenities in the, in, were in the wonderful. Housing, in the housing, okay. Yes, it was in what they call a compound. Mm -hmm. And we lived with the Brits, the Germans, the Swedes, the Koreans. Um, and that was basically it. And, the, of course, the Greeks. Uh, because my husband was number two man there. And we had, you know, had quite a responsibility. Uh, so over this these whole are compound. people that also uh, answered like the ad, or they sent in a resume. Well, they, they, they no, no. Well, the higher ups, yes, you had to go through a resume mm -hmm. search. They, you know, the companies did their searches. Um, the contractors, how they, the Germans were the contractors, the actual building contractors, and what they did was um, uh, they just hired. How they did it, I don't know. I never asked, and you didn't. I want to ask. <laughs> right, right. There's so some things you, it, not to need, not yeah. you don't need to know. No. You know what I mean? That's it's, right. It's a, something under said. Right. Yeah. But it was kind of an interesting. We all settled in. It was uh, the weather was uh, very, very dry. It could get very, very hot, but then again, it could get very, very cold. Uh, we arrived there in January, and at night, it got down to 40 degrees very easily, sometimes even colder. But uh, in the days, it would go up to 80s, and that was in the winter. And in the summer, it could go to 120, and you, but you wouldn't feel it because of, it was so desert, dry. Yeah. It's desert country. And they had everything in the compound. They had, a, they had groceries, they had a pool, Olympic-sized pool. Uh, they had, we could ride our bicycles, um, as far as all the women went, the, the women could ride bicycles, they could not drive. So how did you 
get we, around. We had a little shuttle, like, you know, and we had a driver that took us to town if we wanted to go to town. And we had our own, we stuck with our own people. It right. was and not. Normal routine. Uh, our yeah. no, so we had a normal routine as far as my son's education went. It was excellent. Uh, he went to a European school, but they used American books. And he was in school with the Swedes and with the Germans and with the Brits. They all went to school together. And the language they spoke? It was all English. All English, okay. All English. Everybody was required to speak English. And it, it did make it for a lot easier communication. And then what happened was um, one day, and I have to point out my young son, who was seven years old at the time, had they had a march outside the compound. Now the compound was fenced, completely fenced around a three mile area. And he had to he had to get all the children on his bus in because the driver of the of the uh, of the uh, little van had gone off to march with his fellow Oh my gosh. And just left all the People kids. And left all the kids. I had calls coming in. It was incredible. So your son? My son was seven years old at the time. He drove the bus? He didn't drive the bus. He got he, <laughs> No, he didn't drive the bus. Because you know heaven. what? I have to tell you, I've seen, <laughs> I heard of those things happen. <laughs> no, what he did was uh, he got all the kids out of the bus and he knew about a hole in the fence three miles behind the compound and he took all those children in Wow! and mothers were frantic and you can imagine I was frantic I didn't know what to do but wow. and security was a, it was very scary yeah. so is that sense of insecurity for instance is that always underlying is that yes. something it's always mm -hmm. so you're living this normal life you have a routine but but there's fear there's fear there's, there's, fear. Always, there's fear. fear always fear yeah. always because I had to sign a contract when I entered that country, and that contract stated you must follow our rules, and if you don't, you'll there be consequences. You will, you will have consequences. So was that the um, the military? Or you were building a military Terry compound, right. so it was right. the military that gave you that, um, the Saudi Arabian military that gave you that contract? Uh, no, they get the Saudis went out. Uh, from what I believe is, the Saudis went out, and they contacted this engineering group in Greece, mm -hmm. and Greece went out and looked for people that understood how to build a military city. Okay, and that's how we really ended up there. I see. Wow. So on a daily basis, Celia, uh, you know, tell us your life on a daily basis. You, you wake up. Okay. You're hungry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you I mean, you you're, in, you're in this compound. I mean, three miles, yes, it is. It, it, it's, it's, it's large. It's large. Uh, but from where you come from, in no way in Connecticut, I mean, you can go anywhere, you know, get in your car. And so on a daily basis, what did you do? Well, daily, um, we. I worked sort of kind of worked uh, out of a back office because women were not supposed to be working and they needed typists they needed somebody to type all their all their work and so there were about five of us girls mm -hmm. that would sit in there and we would type secretly 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 typing. oh sure yeah secretly yeah it's like what is that what is that little noise back there unless unless the religious police they got notified that the religious police were coming out to visit then we would we we'd scoot home or go to the pool we would go swimming on a daily mm -hmm. basis uh we go to market with our driver he would drop us off in Tabuk, which was the town closest to us now what kind of food are you buying at the market uh well well, let's see. I was in a fruit and vegetable market and where they had also the pita bread, and mm -hmm. they would make that. And if it fell on the floor, it fell on the floor. They'd just pick it up and sell it to you anyways. It made no difference. It was a cement floor, and the dirt is around, and you just got used to it. Yeah. 
you would buy your vegetables and your fruit, but you would, when you took them home, you would put them in with a capsule of uh, chlorine bleach into the sink with cold water and chlorine ble bleach because you didn't know what was in, right. in the vegetables. So you had to be very careful about that. We did get um, uh, cholera shots before we entered the country. Mm -hmm. uh, you had to do that mm -hmm. because that was, that was one of their diseases at that time. It's so hard to say, like, is well, is dirt or the bleach? Like, which one's worse? Yeah, you know? right, right, right. <laughs> so yeah, did you yeah. have an opportunity to make meals that the family liked? Oh, yes, yes. Because that's also a different, I mean, if you think about the culture that we have here today, it's easy to throw on a steak, you know, whatever, but, you know. You got hamburger. Actually, they had quite a bit of um, American foods there. Okay. Box foods, uh, you know, like your cereals. Mm -hmm. uh, they had eggs. They had um, their biggest meat product was lamb or goat. Mm -hmm. And goat is very much, very similar to lamb. And uh, you would get lamb and goat and uh, you'd have rice and your vegetables. And yeah, actually, it was a full, I mean, you got used to it. Yeah. You got used to the new environment. And was there a time, still that you, you really missed the United States? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I couldn't wait to go home uh, for yeah. uh, Lisa's graduation. She was graduating from St. Bernard's at the time, and I could not wait to get out of that country. Yeah. Yeah. It seems and like you're always holding your breath, almost, like the religious police. Can you imagine? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, it was... Uh, you never knew whether you're doing any, everything right or wrong, or and you had to be very careful of what you said and how you said it. So, did you get an opportunity to visit any sites? Yes. Tell yes. us a little bit about that, Seal. Okay. We we when we got out of country, we called it R and R, rest and relaxation. Like, did you do like that as a family, or we did it as, as a family? family. Okay. We went to Greece. We went to, you always left the country through Jordan. Mm -hmm. So since we were in Jordan, we stopped in Petra. And Petra was fascinating, absolutely fascinating. I think if anybody ever gets to the Middle East, they should visit. Go to Petra. Go yeah. to Petra. Um, I enjoyed Greece. We stayed a month in Greece. And we stayed on the island of Rhodes and enjoyed every minute of it. And it was wonderful because I got to drive. <laughs> now, were you, were you with other families? No. Okay, so that was... It was so just that, our family. Okay, but, but each family could do what their I, own yes. uh, traveling if yep. they wanted. Yeah. Now, did you feel uh, safe leaving the country? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and you said you had actually, to go through Jordan. Actually, you had to go through Jordan. Because the other Jordan. choices you couldn't well, go through? Well, Tabuk is very close to the Red Sea. And uh, it was on the other side of Dubai and, mm -hmm. you know, all the other places. And Aramco is on the other side of the country, too. Mm -hmm. So to, uh, Jordan had the biggest international airline place to go to. So that's why we used Jordan. And we went to Amman. And um, it's a, it was a very modern city. Uh, I'm sure it still is. I, I, I like Jordan. Very much, but um, I have one instance of uh, when Lisa got to Jordan. We I brought her back after graduation, and we got into Jordan, and she's sitting in the cab in a cab driver, and this was hysterical. And the cab drivers over there drive like maniacs. Mm -hmm. They don't stop for anything. And all of a sudden, Lisa said, I don't want to die in this country. Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, you can understand. She just had landed, yes. right? And she's probably... It was new. It was new and, and, and certainly much different than what she was used to. Yeah. Um, like all of you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So did you, did you meet a lot of friends? Sarah? Yes, we met um, a lot of friends. I had a lot of German friends. Um, our neighbors were German and Swedes. And so I made friends with them, and um, wonderful people. They made, they made the uh, beer. We made the wine. The beer, the wine. This is, it's not, a, like, it's not only illegal. Did it's you notice like, that she extrapolated more on 
the alcoholic beverages <laughs> than when I said, did you have good meals for the yeah, family? Right. <laughs> well, she also blamed it on other like, the Germans. Germans. They made the wine. They made the wine <laughs> they made and that. beer. Yeah. Well, it was, it was um, talk about being like looking over your shoulder. Yeah. Well, we, our winemaking, and it was, we had, we used jerry cans, uh, five gallon jerry cans to make the wine. Mm-hmm. And we'd have we decant one, and then we would start on the next. Well, one day I was having a a little luncheon in my little mobile home, and we had ta- we had decanted a bunch of wine and put them in the bottles and everything, and I put them in the cupboard, and all of a sudden we hear this explosion, <gasps> and all this red ooze was coming out from underneath the cabinet. I ran to the cabinet, grabbed everything, ran out to the porch, and here is an Arab doing his prayers. Oh, no. And I'm throwing it in the garbage can. I threw the, I threw the uh, uh, top on top of the garbage and it, can, and it boom. boom. Yeah, yeah. Because I was going to say, that's what would happen. It was like a bomb. Yeah. Yeah, that had gone off. What is it made out of? What is this? Yeast, grape juice. Sugar, yeast, and um, let me tell you, yeast hops, rises hops. and hops. Hops. Yeah. Yeah. Great and juice. you and you know you, you could tell we had a little measuring, you know, little yeah. gauges to watch it. Don't try this at home. I mean, please no. don't try this at home. No, actually, it wasn't bad tasting. It was yeah. pretty, actually, pretty good. Well, I mean, and it's the, probably and like, the, and you don't have anything else to Germans, compare it to at that point. Well, the Germans <laughs> made the beer, and they made it. very good beer, mm. excellent beer. And they also made what we called Siddiqui. Hmm. Now, Siddiqui is really white lightning. <laughs> and oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm understanding took... this trip a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you had to... We, we you had, had to own, make two. We had to make do right. with what we had right. and what we did and everything. And as far as the holidays go, uh, the Swedes imported all the Christmas trees. And they were all live. Wow. Imported them? Yep. They brought them over. So they, and how did you decorate them? Well, <laughs> we made our own decorations. Wow. That's Unbelievable. Really, that's really great. So, so what we're going to do now, um, and then we're going to come back to a little bit of more of a, your, um, the program here. But uh, we're going to turn it over to Frank because you had the opportunity to bring, be, bring into the studio here some beautiful pictures. Uh, of your trip, and we're going to just show Frank just the the ninety second clip uh, of those pictures, and then return back to the the last portion of our show. So if you do that for us, really quickly, because these are just amazing. These pictures, look at that. Yeah, that's a camel, <laughs> and that's how they lived. Wow. And uh, we tried to get some good shots of that, and that is a. Um, a all about all the d- background of Saudi Arabia. And, and what, what is you're this? Looking that was the city? city? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's okay. the town. Wow. And that's my daughter, my son. And my son again. Again, great pictures. And the highways? This, this is the highway, and that's Petra. Wow. And Indiana Jones made his film. Right, there. and if you notice that little person right there, right before, that's right. huge. Right. Wow. And they build it all into the rock. Everything was carved from the rock. It was incredible. My son again. He just seemed so happy and normal. Now, Cecil, I think oh, that's just me. a beautiful picture oh. of you. And, of course, that's this cool. is a, that's your compound. Right. That's our compound. Okay, and those are what the houses look like. Right. And wow. It was, it was quite something. And that's the scenery of driving. Wow. And now and who's this? That's John's that's the babysitter. That's, the baby. <laughs> that's our driver. Okay. And these are children, the Swedes and Germans that Lisa taught to swim. Oh, and this, and this is the alcohol <laughs> And this is down in Sharma. This is beautiful. This That's is on the Red great. Sea. Yeah. And, the, and the Arabs do not like the water at all, so they don't, um, yeah, they don't go to the beach, beach much. at all. Yeah. Yeah. And here's a spider, this which is the, quite large. One of the dangers wow. of living <laughs> in wow. the desert. So we only have a few minutes left, um, and I want to get back to So the ornaments on the holidays, how did you... We made, we made them. Made them, you know, how you can do the chains sure, and the, the paper chains. and all that business. We, we made it up. We just made it. We made do with what we had. So yeah. what you built, is it still over there? As far as I know, it is. It was turned over to the military, 
And uh, that housing compound um, is for the military families now over there. Okay. Hmm. Okay. What did you take away from this, Seal? Uh, first of all, I think it was a great education for my children. It got me to understand exactly how these people live, how they think, mm -hmm. how they act. Um, it was quite an experience, to say the least. Yeah. And we talked a little bit about before the show um, and how grateful uh, we are to live in a country like this. Absolutely. And it's something that I think everyone should take some time in their life and see a third world, how how they live. Well, it's interesting that you said that, and I'll, I'll wrap it up a little bit because, um, you know, my family's from the Philippines, and I always said right before the the children turn into sort of those teenage years, which would be like the 15, you know, be right before right. they drive, that they take the opportunity, whether it's a family member, member of an immigrant family or just, and take your kids mm -hmm. to a third world country. Absolutely. And to realize that there is another world out there but a third world country, will you'll have a real eye opener. Oh! And you come back. Uh, when I made tremendous. my trip back uh, from the Philippines, I actually did one of those things from JFK. I got off, and I <laughs> kissed, kissed the crowd. <laughs> yeah. After a few months being uh, uh, away from the family, but Seal, I want to thank you so much. Well, Please come back for, again. Well, and, thank you and, for having me. And finish out the stories. Thank you, Kristen, for finding such a rare. Uh, gem in what Seal has to offer, not only the Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce, but uh, your wisdom, Seal. It really opened and, my uh, eyes too. Right. It really helped me to give a perspective because it's still very relevant today. To yes, think absolutely. About yes, it is. What the culture is and, and yes, just is. how it must be to live over and there. And a gem just to have it right here in our 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 staff, our small staff of the Chamber of Commerce, to to, to have the experience uh, that you have and and to to not only have it but to share it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the most important, as important part as we, we get older in our lives and our life experiences to share those experiences right. and then someone like Kristen can bring it forward to us and, and now know, enjoy the it. Like, thank you. Ever. <laughs> Celia Gabbard, we, Gabbard, we call her Seal. She's seal. a Seal to us. <laughs> seal. Uh, it's our Seal. Mm -hmm. So we, it's not that we own her, but we do enjoy her. And Kristen, thank you so much. You, I'll Suzanne. see you in the next couple you, of weeks. We are the Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce, Mystic Matters. Good evening. <laughs>